Hey friends, so now last week a friend of mine called me and said Para, I have been learning Python for almost a year But when I try to use it as a data engineer, I feel lost like something is missing So I went through the topics that he was learning and the issue was very simple He wasn't learning too little, but he was learning too much Web apps, machine learning and a lot of different libraries and advanced features Things that he will probably never use at work as a data engineer And this happens a lot, most of the beginners open a random python course and just keep going topic after topic and at the end python gonna start feeling like endless and my friend if you don't have like a clear focused plan you're gonna feel like stuck unfortunately i am stuck here because my boss is making us work like and you're gonna start forgetting the topics that you have learned at the start so to understand what to learn you have to understand what data engineers does we are not building apps we are not building softwares we are just building data pipelines pipeline that's pulls the data, clean it, transform it, load it, and keep running every day. So that's why for data engineers, I'm gonna show you now a smarter way on how to learn Python, where I'm gonna sketch for you a real data pipeline box by box, and then I'm gonna tell you exactly which Python topics you actually need as a data engineer, so that you can have a clear focused plan, and as well, you're gonna learn Python fast. So now let's get started. Okay, so what is a data pipeline? At a very high level, a data pipeline is just a flow. So data comes in from the sources. They go through few steps where we prepare them, clean them and enhance them. And once they are ready, we're gonna load them into the target table. So it is no rocket science. As a data engineers, we have to build only this, the data pipeline. And we use Python in order to do that. And then other people are gonna start using this prepared data in order to build analytical use cases like a data dashboard or an AI and some machine learning stuff. This is the big picture of pipeline. And now we're gonna zoom in into each step in order to understand which Python concepts are needed. So now let's start with the first step on the left side. The sources of our data could be in different technologies like databases or stored in files, or maybe they are provided as a stream like using Kafka and they could live in APIs. So we have different sources of our data. And now the very first step in our pipeline is extract and load. This this is where everything starts so it is very simple we have to connect to the sources start reading the data and then loading it into our system so we are just taking one copy of the, our data and putting it in our system no big smart thing no transformations so now in order to do this step in the pipeline we write a python script so let's have an example now the first thing that we usually do is to create like a config file where we're going to describe the pipeline and as well we're going to put all the connection informations inside it because if you want to connect to something you have to tell exactly where it is but this config file will not move anything it is just description like for example for databases we have all those connection informations the server the port the database name and for the files we give those paths and as well we specify where the data should be loaded and we might specify as well the structure of the tables and the files and of course the question is what to learn in python to do this you have to learn the data structure in python so the whole thing is just a nested dictionary everywhere we have like key and value and as well in some scenarios we might go and use a list so actually that's it for the config file all what you have to learn is data structure in python and focus in the two types list and dictionary now after that we're gonna go and create the main script in order to extract and load now this is just an example we don't have to read it line by line i just want to tell you what to learn so here we are trying to load from file database and from kafka and we as data engineers we usually use a spark in order to do the job the thing is usually we work with massive amount of data big data and we cannot rely on only python because it doesn't scale very well with big data so that's why we need an extra thing the spark because it is built on distributed computing so it's gonna split the work into multiple machines and processes in order to do the job in parallel with that we gain speed in our pipelines so that's why it is a must library that we learn as data engineers in order to deal with big data so now let's talk about easier stuff in python we have to do some loops so as you can see here, we have a for loop for the files, another one for the databases. And the reason is very simple because we have a lot of files and tables and we have to load them one by one. And in order to do that, we're gonna build a loop. And same thing if you want to load as well from Kafka. Another thing, we have to learn how to work with files. So how to read from a file and how to write into a file. So for example, here we are reading from CSV file and we are writing into parquet file. And same things goes for the databases. So how to connect to data 
database and how to read a table from it. And at the end, we write it as well as a file. Same thing for Kafka. So how to read from Kafka and how to write at the end as a file. So as you can see, as a data engineer, you have to learn how to connect to multiple different sources and how to read data from it. So that's all about the main script that start moving data. The thing is, as a data engineers, we don't run the pipelines manually and start watching whether everything is fine. Instead, we run it automatically. And if something fails, we're going to go and check the logs. So a log is just information for us in order to identify what happens and what is exactly the error. So you have to learn how to build a log for your pipeline. And it is very simple. You're going to import, for example, the logging library and start writing few informations and error messages. Like, for example, here, the pipeline started and count how many data do we have. And at the end, write a successful message or you write a pipeline failed if things goes wrong. So all what you have to do is to learn how to deal with this library. And the second Python concept that you have to learn, and very important one is error handling. All what you have to learn is how to use the try and accept in order to catch the errors and customize the messages if your pipeline fails. So this is one thing that we do. Another thing is that sometimes the pipelines runs successfully, but the data is corrupted. This is very tricky one. So for order to catch those issues, we're going to build something called data quality. We want to check and investigate whether our data is healthy. So now there could be a lot of data quality checks that we might do, for example, whether the data is empty. Now, what are the things that we are using here is the conditional statements. This is the basics in order to do any checks in Python. And as well, here we are using some Python functions, like here we are calculating the length. It is very simple, just the conditional statements and few Python functions. And now my friends, if you are serious about becoming a data engineer or you want to master Python for data roles, I highly recommend DataCab. What I love about this platform is you can actually write your code right in your browser without any installations and you're going to get an instant feedback, which is a game changer. So I recommend you to start with the Python data fundamentals track. It's going to cover everything from basic Python to data manipulations using Panda to visualizations with the Seaborn and even statistics. And of course, there are real projects like analyzing the Netflix data or the LA crime stats. Now, the next step, I recommend you the data engineer in Python track. It is the next step to deep dive into skills that employers want, like you name it, cloud computing, data ingest, data clean, APIs, building ETL pipelines, workflow with the airflow. Plus, both tracks can prepare you for industry recognized certifications to help you stand out. So if you want to learn Python fast, check the links in the description. I can get you even 25% discount. So now let's do a quick recap about the step one, extract and load. So we build a main Python script and on top of it, there are some add-ons like the configs, the logging, the data quality, and the concept that you have to learn in Python are the data structure, especially the dictionary and lists, how to control the flow using loops, and as well the conditional statements, if else, how to work with files to read and write for different types, CSV, JSON, parquets, how to connect to databases and read tables, and as well for advanced things, how to connect to Kafka and read topics. And as well, we have to learn about the Spark basics. So how to start a session, how to put data inside data frames and stuff like that, because Spark is going to help us to work with massive amount of data. And another library that you have to learn is the logging, how to write infos and error messages, and how to handle errors and exceptions using try and accept if your pipeline fails. OK, so that's all about the first step. We didn't do something smart. We just focused on how to get the data in. Now, the next step is all about cleaning up the data and enhancing it. So what you're going to do, we're going to take this raw copy of the data that is missing. We're going to start fixing it, handling missing value, removing duplicate and doing small enhancements on top of it. And of course, we're going to do this step by writing as well a Python main script. And as well, we're going to have the same add-ons where we're going to have a config file, a logging, a data quality and so on. So now let's have a Python example to understand what we have to learn. OK, so now again, you don't have to understand all those details line by line. We just want to understand what to learn in order to write those scripts. So again, it is based on PySpark. In order to process massive amount of data fast, we have to learn Spark and PySpark. So at the start, we are just importing it. So now the first step is that we want to read the files that we loaded, right? In order to do that, we build our first loop. So we're going to iterate through all the tables. And all what we have to do is to just read it. For every column inside those tables, we want to apply few simple cleanup rules. So inside it, we have the cleanup logic. And this is again based on the conditional statements, if else. It is very simple. We are saying if the data type is a string, then do this function. And the second rule, if the column name ends with the underscore 
updates, then do another function. So conditional statements. And here the third thing that we have to learn, as you can see, we have to learn how to build user defined functions. This is very important in data engineering to have some modularity in your code and not to repeat the same things over and over. Instead, we put it in one function and then we reuse it whenever we want. Like for example, inside my data, there will be a lot of string values. In my project, I have always this rule that I want to trim or remove any unwanted spaces and make all the characters lowercase. So for this logic, for this rule, I can put it in one function and reuse it each time. So for example, over here, we can define a function called apply text cleanup. We're going to pass for it our data and the columns. And here the functions are very simple. We're going to use the lower to convert everything to lowercase and as well the trim in order to remove the unwanted spaces. And same things goes for the dates. This happens a lot in projects where you have a column with a data type string, but actually inside it, there are dates. So now here I'm cleaning up the data type by converting it from string to date. And I can do that by using the function to date. So that means my friends, we have to learn all the functions and methods that are related to data types. So a quick recap about this phase in order to clean up and enhance your data. This is what you have to learn in Python, how to control the flow of your code, how to do loops and nested loops, how to use the conditional statements, if else, and some basic string, number and date functions, and how to cast between the different data types and of course how to write small python functions how to work with files read and write and of course the basics of PySpark. so that's all for this step inside your pipeline and as you can see we are repeating the stuff we just added the functions and how to manipulate your data using some basic functions in python okay so now so far what you have done the first step we just brought the data in the second step we just cleaned up the data and now moving on to the last step inside our pipeline here we can apply the business logic and the fun starts. So we're going to take the data that is clean and start joining it together, doing some data aggregations and start applying the business logic, the business data transformations. And of course, for this, the same thing going to happen. We're going to write main Python scripts in order to do this step. And we're going to have on top of it some add-ons like the config files, the logging and the data quality. So let's have an example script in order to understand what we have to learn in order to do this. Let's go. Again, we don't have to understand the details line by line. So there are a few similarities like for example we're gonna use the PySpark to have good performance for big data we have to learn how to work with files so how to read and at the end of course how to write now about working with data using Python here we have like two options either we're gonna use the Python stuff like how to join two tables how to do the group by and use simple Python functions like the count and the sum so that means we're gonna use the Python aggregate functions and the PySpark methods on how to join tables and and to group by or the second way which is the one that i like if i have to build a business logic in data i go and start using an sql so i'm gonna use sql inside python and usually as we build the business logic we need the help of the business people so the one that understand the processes and the business and we usually show them the sql script and try to work on it together this is way easier than showing a python script and in some scenarios using this might give you as well better performance but we'll not go now in details comparing those two this is one way on how to build the business logic by using the PySpark SQL inside Python or you can stay with Python and PySpark without bringing the SQL topic you just have to join the data aggregated and do a very simple logic so now let's recap about this phase. We take the clean data, we build on top of it the business logic. Of course, this depends on the business domain and the complexity of the projects. So again, the skills that you have to learn is how to work with the files. So how to read and write into files. You need to learn extra stuff now about PySpark, like how to join tables, do aggregations, how to filter the data, and some basic Python aggregate functions like the sum, the count, the average. And as well, you have to learn how to use SQL in Inside Python, like for example, using the PySpark SQL. And of course, if things get complicated, you might need the control flow, the loops, and to build few functions. So my friends, actually, that's it. It's over. Okay, friends, now we come to the point where I don't have any more coffee and we have to recap. So as you can see, as data engineers, our job is not that hard. We just have to build this data pipeline where it has mainly three steps. The first one is extract and load. So we're going to bring the data from the sources into our system without any extra logic or transformations. And now the next step, we're going to take the raw data and start cleaning it up and enhance it. So we're going to fix the data type. We're going to clean the text. We're going to handle the dates and make sure everything is prepared for the last step where we're going to 
transform and apply their business logic. So we're gonna join the tables, aggregate the data, apply the rules, and prepare a final product for the analytics and as well for AI use cases. So now about the skills, I'm gonna order it from basics to advanced. We're gonna start with the fundamentals. So you're gonna learn the variables and the basic data types, the functions and methods for each data type in order to learn how to clean up and transform the data. Then very important is how to control the flow. So the Python loops and especially the nested loops in order to iterate through the tables and the columns and how to use the conditional statements if else in order to specify the rules on what exactly should be transformed. And for the metadata and configurations, you have to learn the Python data structures and especially the dictionaries and lists. After that, we go to intermediate stuff where we learn how to work with the files. So how to read and write to files and of course different types, CSV, JSON and as well parquets, how to connect and read data from databases and as well how to connect to stream like a Kafka and how to read topics from it. And as well, we have to learn about the error handling using try and accept, how to build a logging for our pipeline. And as well, you have to learn how to write functions. We want to write always generic and reusable codes if something keep repeating. And of course, finally, we're going to learn about the Spark and the PySpark because it's going to speed up the performance for big data. So learn the basics like how to create a session, how to create data frame, how to join tables, aggregate data, filter data, and some basic stuff. And finally, learn how to use SQL inside Python. So that's it. As a data engineer, if you are learning Python in this order, it's going to stop feeling random and endless. Each skill is actually mapped to a real step inside the data pipelines. So if this video helped you to make things more clear on how to learn Python as a data engineer, then support the channel by subscribing, liking, and commenting to reach nice people like you. And if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I wish you a happy new year for you and for your family. I'm going to see you in the next year in the next video. Bye-bye.